forests cover a total of 4 billion hectares worldwide, equivalent to almost a third of the planet's total land area. But these forests are vanishing quickly. In the tropics alone, they are shrinking of over 2,000 square kilometers per year. Deforestation is responsible for around 10% of global carbon emissions. At the last climate summit of the United Nations, in the Peruvian capital Lima, scientists make clear that without reducing deforestation, we won't be able to curb global emissions. Carbon is a central component of the strategy to mitigate climate change. We want to pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put it into places like forests as organic carbon, as trees, as a way to reduce our impact on greenhouse gas emissions and their concentrations in the atmosphere. To make this happen, the first step is to measure emissions and map the capacity of forests to trap carbon. International programs aimed at reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, such as the Red Plus, require countries to produce high-resolution maps to monitor how the forests are managed and change over time. A difficult task that in the past was performed from the ground, slowly and expensively. In many forests, getting out into remote areas of the forest and being able to take careful measurements of uh, the uh, trees and understanding what carbon they have is a, is a major challenge. So being able to provide tools that really help to uh, reduce uh, the efforts needed uh, is, is extremely important. One important example of these tools is uh, the use of, of LIDAR, which is uh, essentially using a, a, a laser system to be able to better understand the height of trees um, and use that information to estimate biomass. LIDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. The Carnegie Airborne Observatory of Stanford University is experimenting with airborne LIDAR to improve carbon stock mapping. What we're doing is we're trying to develop cost-effective, high-resolution methods for mapping the carbon stocks of forests in, at a country scale over a, an entire nation at a time. Esner LIDAR system beams laser signals to the ground. The light bounces back from trees, root and plants in the forest. On board, a spectrometer reads the signal and colors the map. Red for healthy forest with high levels of locked carbon, blue for urban areas with no forest. The maps are easy to read even for the lay person and very detailed so that they keep a clear record of how people interact with the land. Their, their decisions on the land are then expressed in these maps. So if their decision is to uh, take a forest and cut it down for uh, agriculture, that's very obvious in these maps. If it's a decision to, say, uh, restore a forest by, um, say, uh, removing a, a previous land use, that is expressed in, a, in those maps as well. So all of these kinds of human interactions with the environment are resolved in these high-resolution carbon maps that we make now. Monitoring human activities such as logging and mining industry can be as important for the environment as investigating the natural state of the forest themselves. High-resolution maps created by airborne LiDAR systems can help with this too. When it comes to carbon mapping, uh, you see everything that's going on. A classic example now here in Peru is this issue of illegal gold mining. The gold mining has uh, created vast areas of deforested lands that are obvious in, say, satellite data, but it's also produced a lot of small-scale changes in the forest where small clandestine mining operations have occurred, and those operations have kind of uh, removed pieces of the forest in small, chewing away at the forest, think of it that way. These carbon maps show the impact of humans on the forest in that way, in utter detail.